Hey everybody, this is Chris Bober with Team Bober Nebraska Realty, and I got a special for you today. Um, we're coming to you from our home offices, um, and I'm here today with Nick Zwiebel, who is the owner of Exarbon Mortgage. And Nick is one of my go-to lenders, who um, has been around for like 20 years and has gotten a lot of my clients through easy and tough situations. But the one thing we do know is even within this last week, there have been a lot of changes in the lending world, right? So we, you know, as realtors, we can bring you kind of what's going on in the marketplace, but some of these market changes and conditions are kind of being driven by the lending practices that are going on and, and things like this. So, so, Hey Nick, how you doing today? Good, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah, and we're going to be posting this um, on our social media and wherever you find this, you're going to have links to, to find me and to find Nick. So when you do have questions, you can come back and and get those answered for you. But um, I'm, Nick has kind of a little bit of a presentation that he's going to give us today. Um, you know, this is, what is it, April 17th, 2020. And why don't you go ahead and take it away, Nick. Share your screen with your presentation and we'll go through this. And, and I can't wait to learn all these things. So I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely, Chris. Thanks for uh, having me on. And uh, yeah, right now it's just obviously during the pandemic, unprecedented times. Um, so in the lending world, I keep on seeing um, just really the guidelines changing almost daily. Um, most of that obviously is because a lot of people are either being laid off, furloughed, and you know times are tough. You know money's not coming in or coming in like it has been. So there's uh, a lot of new things that have came out, the CARES Act, which provides for individuals that have a mortgage to um, be able to file with their current lender or servicer to um, get a forbearance up to 180 days, so six months, no mortgage payments. Um, so with that, um, lenders, even though they're granting forbearance to uh, borrowers, that are in need of delaying payments uh, while we navigate through the pandemic and uh, hopefully uh, get back up and running as a country, you know, a few months down the road, money's not coming into uh, the servicers during forbearance, but they still are obligated to keep making those monthly mortgage payments to who currently owns the note, which typically is Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. So the majority of loans the last few years are being held with uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and they, uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have not granted forbearance to like lenders or banks, so they're still having to make the payments, uh, even though money's not coming in. So a lot of the um, people that are filing for forbearance right now are on either um, FHA loans, a lot of those right now, or if they have lower credit scores. So that's why we keep on seeing new overlays come in and you know, increasing uh, credit scores and tightening up the guidelines to help qualify. And I'll just go through uh, a few of these with you, Chris, just so people know, um, you know, how to navigate during this process. So right now, you know, um, the first thing I want to go over is everyone, all homeowners and buyers, just need to understand, and everyone involved in the transaction, we just need to allow for more time right now. Um, Right now, the best advice um, for any potential home buyer that's purchasing their first home or their second or third home is right now, it's just taking a little bit longer for everything. Um, when the uh, uh, coronavirus started spreading to the um, US in February, um, we saw rates just plummet. Anytime there's bad news, um, really anywhere, home or throughout the world, a lot of times that uh, affects the markets and in turn, the interest rates drop. So we saw an unprecedented volume for refinances at the beginning of March, and most lenders were not prepared for the uh, increased uh, record-breaking volume. So that put a lot of stress. And then with that, a lot of people being laid off or furloughed, working from home, and then the government stepping in and asking um, you know, all lenders and servicers to grant forbearance for any individuals that need that. So we're seeing just record low rates, record volume, plus um, forbearance. So all that coming together is just really slowing down the process. Appraisers are taking a long time because of their unprecedented volume. Uh, a lot of lenders are well over capacity and so they just can't keep up with all the business that they currently have. And then also a lot of these lenders, of course, had all of their operations department or most of their operations department working 
at an office and trying to transition them to a home environment. So it's just put a lot of stress on lenders and time, of course, is just being added. Most uh, loans that would take only 30 days or less to process, underwrite, and close now in some cases are taking 45, 60, or even more depending on the lender. Yeah, so we have, looks like they, there's some guidelines that have come in that really haven't been around for, for a while or ever. To, you know, I think you're, you're kind of getting to that now, but credit scores, employment verifications, debt to income ratios, tell us about those. Yeah, so um, with that and the um, distress of everything, a lot of lenders are increasing all their minimum uh, credit scores on all products to at least 620 or higher. Some lenders just as recently as yesterday and today have increased their minimums uh, from 620 to 640 that I actually heard a few are going up to minimum scores of about a 680 for FHA, VA, and even conventional loans. So it's just unprecedented times. Um, and then the guidelines are just getting stricter. So with all loans now that are in process, even if it started um, back in February before all the new guidelines came in, they want to make sure every individual that they're lending to is still working, still working full time, even if they do have to work from home. They want to make sure they're not laid off or furloughed, uh, just so, of course, the lender uh, knows they have the highest probability to recoup the money that they're um, out there lending. So a lot of other changes that came in, maximum debt to income ratios, um, you have obviously uh, decreased. So um, before certain borrowers that may qualify for a little bit more are either qualifying for less or may not qualify at all just because the debt ratios have gone down from either 50 to 55% to most cases uh, less than 45%. And that's the total uh, debt to income for everyone's debts, including the new uh, mortgage. And then some other um, um, things that I came into play. If it's not your primary residence, so if it's an investment property or a second home, um, a lot of investment properties now with lenders are a case by case scenario, meaning that you know certain borrowers may not qualify for investment properties or second homes, uh, where you know just two months ago they may have qualified for investment properties or a second home. So just a lot of extra conditions um, to qualify in today's environment. Um, uh, going on to my next um, uh, slide. So anyone that's uh, self-employed, getting uh, money from rental incomes, there's additional overlays where either their self-employment income might be reduced by as much as 25% to qualify. Um, they also have, need to have reserves now, which previously on self-employed, as long as they had the income, we just qualify like normal. Now self-employed borrowers, they're wanting uh, either reserves or reduce their net income by 25% to qualify. And then along with that, first-time home buyers, it's just a little bit more difficult to qualify too as well. We're still qualifying first-time home buyers, whether one first-time home buyers have better credit scores. A lot of times they're wanting to verify that they have at least 12 months of on-time payments um, renting or a rental history of 12 months. Um, and then along with that, um, every first time home buyer, they're wanting to make sure they have reserves of either three or six months, depending on that first time home buyer situation. Wow, you, you know, the, that's all very new. Um, I've never heard of like the reserve thing for self-employed or first time home buyers. Of course, they want you to have cash enough to close, but um, right. th that's a pretty, pretty um, strict guideline. And um, just a quick overlay of this real quick. Um, you were around back when this thing went into the, the recession back yep. that was real estate driven. Um, obviously these things didn't come up because or else if they did, they wouldn't, we wouldn't have gone into the recession. Do you think that's kind of what's going on here? They're just trying to prevent this thing from getting really bad by kind yep. of pausing it a little bit. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, Chris. So, you know, since, uh, you know, the 2008 recession, I mean, it was a little bit ago, but you know, a lot of lenders and a lot of people have just, you know, learned, you know, a little bit about what we went through back then. And of course, they're trying to be more proactive today to make sure that, you know, a housing crisis doesn't happen similar to 2008. Definitely a different time right now and caused by different, um, you know, scenarios with uh, uh, COVID-19. So not exactly the same, but lenders, I think, are being a little bit more proactive, a little bit more aggressive to make sure that we don't have a similar housing collapse as before. So I think that's why we are seeing a little bit stricter guidelines. We saw some of these back then, 
Uh, some of these uh, guidelines that are coming out here daily are in some ways, you know, a little bit stricter than back then. Not necessarily for all borrowers, but definitely uh, first-time home buyers and self-employed um, seem to be a little bit stricter than what I remember uh, back then, 10, 11 years ago, when we went through the 08 housing crisis. Nice, thank you. You're definitely welcome. So this one's just a first-time home buyer uh, just verification, uh, uh, just a continuation. Basically, again, is this first time home buyers for having to verify rent, which previously we didn't always have to verify rent. This is for all borrowers, really, regardless of uh, uh, credit score, um, you know, and debt to income ratio. A lot of lenders are wanting to verify at least, you know, uh, six or 12 months of, of rent history. Um, and then if they are currently rent free or living uh, with family members, they just want to verify that they are actually uh, truly uh, rent free. So, you know, to summarize everything, Chris, is, you know, all products, uh, especially FHA and VA, VA loans right now are a little bit stricter guidelines. Even on the conventional side, they're a little bit stricter. If you have lower credit scores on the conventional, higher debt ratios, or if you're self-employed, or if your income's driven from rental income, if you own a whole bunch of investment properties, it is a little bit stricter in today's environment. Um, so what I'm telling everyone, uh, every borrower I work with is, you know, just allow a little bit more time. Things have changed, but we still are lending um, to um, good buyers. So, you know, don't um, worry uh, too much about, uh, the changes, of course, we got to keep all the changes in mind. And then anyone that has uh, previously been approved, you know, January, February, even March, and hasn't found a house, definitely recommending that they go back to their lender, to their loan officer, make sure that they do qualify. Uh, the majority of people that qualified a few months ago will still qualify. There's just a little bit of changes uh, with timing and making sure that, you know, buyers uh, have their down payment, the credit scores, and debt ratios have been reduced a little bit. So um, all these changes coming out, we're still lending the majority of buyers, just a little bit stricter for a few buyers. Yeah, so it looks like the um, the way we're doing business in real estate is changing. And it's, I did a thing yesterday about this, but it, it just continues to change and it's changing faster than we've ever seen. But um, oh from your perspective, I see that it's, you're just gonna have to be on top of this more. Right. So yeah. um, qualification, a pre-qualification isn't necessarily mean that you're qualified. You know, you got a lot of stuff to go through and they're going to they're, they're making it hard, not harder, but just a little bit more restrictive to minimize their risk, the, the lending institutions and their investors. Um, and then really, at the end of the day, it isn't your house until we hand you the keys, because one thing one thing I've heard is that they used to be able to just get a verbal, okay, you're, you still got a job. Great. Now they have to document whether they have that job or, and, or if they've had their hours reduced, if they've been furloughed, if they've, if they've been affected at all. Um, so it's, we, you know, our jobs are even more important to have a good professional, um, to walk you through this. Um, I know that one of the things that in the, in the, in the Omaha area we're doing is we have a, an addendum regarding the disrupt, disruption of real estate related services. So we basically have everyone in the part, all parties to a transaction um, sign a disclosure, understanding that there are some things that are out of our control, right? So um, if an appraiser can't get there, if a lender has stricter requirements, if certain things happen, you know, we have to disclose that someone gets contracts COVID-19 or someone can't get in or out of something. And it's just, everyone has to be a little bit more patient. I think that's kind of what's coming down to. Would you agree, Nick? Yeah, I definitely agree with you, Chris. So allow a little bit more time, work very closely with the professionals, with your real estate agent, with your loan officer, make sure you're in contact with them as much as possible. And if there are any changes, you know, with employment, income, reduction of hours, you know, just make sure that you let your loan officer, lender know right away, be in close contact with um, your real estate agent that's helping you, uh, you know, purchase your house. And as long as there's open communication, uh, I believe that we're going to navigate through this, you know, and be fine. Um, and the majority of borrowers are still going to qualify, but it may be a little bit reduced, uh, you know, 
they may not get as high of a purchase price as previously that they could just a few months ago, or they might have a little bit more restrictions where they might have to document maybe more assets where before they didn't have to turn in a retirement account like a 401k or IRA. Now the loan officer is coming back saying, hey, you're still fine for everything. Things, still fine for the purchase price. Now we just need to verify that you have a little bit more assets than what we previously did. Um, yeah, definitely uh, staying close with your agent and loan officer throughout this process and you know, definitely still uh, end up with a positive result at the end. Yeah, and don't don't assume because one one door closes that another one doesn't open. We've had, we have deals going on now where um, because of different restrictions, you just have to come at the, the problem from a different angle to find a solution. Um, you know, some some community banks are, are stepping up and 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 holding loans themselves. I, I think we're going to see some solutions out of this that that are going to create some opportunities in the marketplace for both buyers and sellers. But but the one thing we do know is that people who still need to buy and sell real estate, if they're reasonable about their time and even the price, there's a little bit more of a hassle to go through, but you can still get the results you want if you have good people working with you. So, um, you know, I don't want to go too long in this because I, I want people to see it. I don't want them to be inundated, but there's Nick's information. Um, and wherever I'm, sh we're sharing this video, I'm going to share Nick's information and our information so that you know that you have a great team out there that if you are looking to buy um, or even sell real estate, you know, you want to understand what the potential obstacles are. Um, so that you can take advantage of whatever opportunities come around. Right, Nick? Definitely agree, Chris. So still going to be a lot of opportunities out there. Um, wanted to touch on that interest rates are still just record lows. So there's just opportunities to, you know, still qualify for uh, good payments, maybe even lower than what you're thinking about if you were looking into uh, purchasing last year. So for very well qualified buyers, their rates are just unprecedented super low, almost all time lows ever. So, and we predict that they're going to stay low for, you know, at least the short term, the next few months. So definitely still a great opportunity to buy, um, you know, and still take advantage of really great interest rates and a lot of opportunities still out there for, you know, many people. Yeah. yeah. And they, um, you know, they, they added these restrictions really fast. Um, they, there's some of these, or all of, not all of them probably, but some of these things can come, come off um, rather quickly too, right? So it isn't like this is forever. Um, you know, if we get positive reports back with that in the community with, with whatever's going on with COVID or um, stuff gets opened back up, like I know in the Midwest, we're going to predict it to open things back up a little sooner than maybe the rest of the world. Um, just keep checking in. If you, if you come close to getting qualified or, you know, think that you're wanting to buy or sell, things change daily and they could come back and say, you know what? Things have come back. We're okay with, we're going to move this credit score or we're going to, I mean, it's going to be a different world we live in after this, but it doesn't mean it's going to be always like this. So check back in with us. Um, our, again, our information is going to be in this thing. Um, we, we, we're going to stay in touch with as many people as possible because again, things change all the time and they've been changing to be harder, but at some point they're going to change it and make it easier too. So, yep. um, Stay in touch with us. We're going to kind of wrap it up here. Uh, so again, our information that is for, for Nick at Exarban Mortgage and myself and Jen at Team Bober Nebraska Realty, we're going to include it wherever you see this video. So um, I, just get, I just want to thank Nick. I really appreciate you coming on here. I think there's a lot of misconceptions of what's going on. So it's good to have the facts. And um, we'll stay in touch. We'll stay up to date with you guys. Any new stuff comes up, we're going to put it out there for you guys. And again, our goal is to educate and empower our clients to make great real estate decisions. And, and right now there's a lot of, a lot of education going on. And that's what we're here to do. So Nick, we really appreciate you coming on today and um, thank you, Chris. we'll share your stuff. So be sure to reach out to Nick or I with any questions. So thank you so much. And we will just see you all later.